Hi everyone. Welcome back. It is Saturday. Um, and normally we're not here on Saturday, but every once in a while, at least once a month, we do a number crunching video where we talk about the price of things. And, you know, for the most part, <laughs> excuse me, for the most part, our goal is to crunch numbers and help you make good decisions about whatever it is that you are trying to do when planning a Walt Disney World vacation. Um, sometimes those numbers are like more crunchy than others. You know, like sometimes those numbers are like extra crispy. Sometimes those numbers are like toast. Yeah. So today is like a toast episode. We don't have a ton of super, um, like this isn't going to be like a math heavy episode. You notice we don't have the easel. Um, it's more of an episode where we're just going to walk through some of the numbers, um, give you some of our thoughts. So. Hi, Mark. He says he prefers original recipe. You know, I mean, everyone has their thing. <laughs> <laughs> so, today we are focusing on park tickets, which is actually super appropriate because park ticket prices did just go up. This is pretty mm -hmm. standard. Every year, okay, we'll just get this out there right now. Every year, park tickets go up. At Walt Disney World. Um, I think, now, I'm not 100% sure. I'd have to, I'd have to look back. But I think mm -hmm. that it didn't go up for every type of ticket. It just went up for some tickets. Yeah. Um, also, hold on, because Russ is doing some numbers over here as we mm -hmm. speak. Um, make sure that you look at the adult ticket for that. Okay. Okay. Come on. So, um... How many days was it? Sorry. I don't remember. Because I think, if I remember correctly, the number of... So what happened, in a nutshell, if you don't already know, is that the price of park tickets went up, but it's only the price on certain park tickets. Mm -hmm. So I want to say it was like the two, three, and four, or something like that. I don't remember. These prices look exactly the same as when I originally did That's this prior like to park me. tickets mm -hmm. going up. But, so here's the... Okay. There's a lot to say with this episode. Um, the difficult thing about talking about park tickets at Walt Disney World is that there is such a big variety. So let's start off today's discussion by talking a little bit about the different prices you might pay for Walt Disney World park tickets. By the way, Russ is here. He didn't say hi. I did say hi. Did Barely. Barely. Yeah, I did. I didn't I, even look up. Um, we're working hard today. It's been so, a day. It has been a day. We did a lot today. A lot of adventure. Um, so, purchasing tickets for Walt Disney World, you have a few different options. Mm -hmm. Right off the bat. And we're not talking about adults versus children. I'm talking about there are day tickets. So you can buy a ticket for one day mm -hmm. at one park. Yeah. Then there are things called, I think those are called like standard tickets, base tickets mm -hmm. um, is another option. <laughs> no worries, um, Mark. Hi. Hi. See, even Mark said hi. <laughs> um, <laughs> it took a little prompting, but it's all right. Everyone said hello. Um, so there are base tickets. Those are your standard one one park per day ticket. Yep. Then Disney has something that is sometimes just referred to as the park hopper ticket. Other people refer to it as the park hopper option. Mm -hmm. So this is going to be a ticket that allows you to go to one or more mm -hmm. parks per day. So again, you can purchase it for one day and go to as many parks as you can take your sore little feet to. Um, Oh, I'm sorry, I thought we were going to get into numbers. Never mind. Not yet, not yet. Okay. Or you can, you know, go to to two parks, or if you don't happen to do that, you can go to just your one park, and that's fine, too. Um, the park hopper does get more expensive, obviously, because it is more 
Depends on the day. It, well, of course, but the park hopper gets more expensive. We haven't gotten there yet. Mm -hmm. um, but it is not as expensive to buy a park hopper as it is to buy two individual base tickets. Meaning, if you plan on going and you only have one day, mm -hmm. and you want to go to Magic Kingdom and Epcot, buying a park hopper is going to more likely than not be cheaper than buying a one-day ticket to Magic Kingdom and a one-day ticket to Epcot and using them. Am I making sense? It's different if you're going on two separate days, but if you're if you only on one day, okay? Um, so those are like your two options for tickets. Mm -hmm. Generally speaking, you have a base ticket and you have a park hopper. Then, of course, there are annual passes. There are multiple types of annual passes. Some of them are not currently being sold, but we're still going to talk about it anyway. Okay, um, so with annual passes, there are there are annual passes for Florida residents just for the weekday. There are annual passes for Florida residents that are just for the weekends. There are annual passes for Florida residents and Disney Vacation Club members that are most days of the year with the exception of some blackout dates. Mm -hmm. And then there is something called the Increda Pass. Now the Increda Pass is there's no blackout dates for that one. Nope. So you can go any time of year. Yep. We could be crunching numbers on any number of these passes, but today we're going to be specifically referring to the Incredit Pass. Yeah. What are you chuckling at? It's just funny because it's not even available right now. It's not available right now. <laughs> but we're going to be talking about that. The Incredit Pass is the top tier of the annual passes, and it has no blockout dates or blackout dates or whatever you yep. want to call them, blockout dates. Um, so that's the one we're going to be talking about. We're not going to be talking about the others. Those are going to be more affordable. Mm -hmm. But since they're only for Florida residents and or Disney Vacation Club members, most of you watching this are going to be thinking about the Increda Pass if you're thinking about a pass, yep. an annual pass. So that's what we're going to talk about. Um, and before we get into anything else about annual passes, because I know there are going to be some of you who are wondering, as a Disney Vacation Club member, I don't think that the Disney Vacation Club member annual pass is worth it. Um, no. I have reasons for that, and I have reasons that I'm pretty grumpy about the way that Disney Vacation Club got their own pass versus having a discount on annual passes. Mm -hmm. We're going to talk about that some other time. So um, make sure that you hit subscribe so you don't miss that um, because we are going to be having that discussion. Not today, though. No. Okay. So. So. Where do we even start with this one? For me, I have my notebook. <laughs> um, when it comes to picking what pass is right for you, it's really going to depend. Oh, well, we talked about the different passes, but I forgot to talk about some of the pricing structure. So okay. there are all these different passes yeah. that you can get, the, all these different admission tickets that you can get. The, okay, so real quick, though. Sure. It, it seems like the way they did it is you get a ticket, and then you add on options to the ticket. Well, hold on, because you're kind of getting ahead of what I'm trying to say here okay. for a second. So, My apologies. All, with the exception of annual passes, with the exception of annual passes, all tickets that you can purchase have um, come at different price points. Okay? <clears throat> so an annual pass is going to be what an annual pass costs. But whether we're talking about park hoppers or base tickets, those standard tickets, one-day tickets, those prices are going to be different depending on not only if you're talking about an adult or a child, mm -hmm. but they're going to be different depending on the time of year that you're purchasing that ticket or even the time of the week that you're purchasing that ticket. So, for example, do you still have the calendar up? A calendar? The, ca the, the oh, ticket oh, pricing. The ticket pricing per calendar yeah. day? Uh, I can. Hold on. Well, it's just, um, hold on, sorry, my apologies. Yeah, so get that one day ticket. Okay, we're doing this as we go. Okay, yeah, so for example, if you were to buy a one day ticket for 
tomorrow, which would be, oh, excuse me, not for tomorrow, for February 22nd, okay? That ticket, that one day ticket would be $134. That's crazy, you can't even buy tickets right now. No, um, not for today. But anyway, um, so that would be $134, okay? Mm -hmm. But if you wanted to buy that same ticket for Saturday, it would be 149 Yep. So this is kind of what I'm getting at here, is the price for the ticket, for that one-day ticket, changes depending on the time of week, depending on the time of the year, and it goes back down again. So, for example, 20, the 22nd is 134 for the Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday is 139 Saturday is 149 Sunday is 139 uh, excuse me, Sunday is 139 and Monday is 134 Saturday, So Saturday is the expensive day. Yeah. So the reason I'm bringing this up, and this changes as well depending on Honestly. the time of the year. During Christmas time, tickets can get very expensive. Um, can you pop on over to maybe July? Sure, of course. So we're going to take a look at July real quick. And we're referencing the Walt Disney World website. We're looking at a one-day ticket. Is that mm -hmm. what we clicked on? Yeah, just a one-day ticket right now. Okay. There's not like the, the three-day deals or anything like that right this mm -hmm. second. That is April. So it's actually pretty much the same in it's, July as well. Uh, the week of the 11th is 129 it's you actually know. cheaper to go on July 4th than on this coming Saturday. That's crazy. You but, would think, you, you know, know what I mean? So, yeah. it, it's always changing. Yeah. It's a perfect it example. It's always changing. And so, you don't know what it's going to do. <laughs> but the point of bringing this up is that the pricing is different depending on exactly when you're wanting to go. Mm -hmm. So it can be very difficult when you're trying to crunch numbers and trying to figure out, like, generally speaking, what the value of a ticket is going to be because mm -hmm. it could be. You know, it says starting at $109, but when are you planning on going and what exactly does that mean? So, um, so what we're going to do, let me see what I looked at over here. What I did is I based some of my numbers on that $109 price point. Sure. So that's where things start on. Um, and of course, things are going to change, but we're trying to go for like a rough rough idea here yeah rough, rough um customer. so can you pop on over because it looks like mark just made a comment what did yeah. he have to say uh the same one day ticket for any day through an expiration date for the military is 142 um 75 percent uh of days disney online prices are cheaper than 142. yeah they are and um also i will say i have things to say about that as well um, we've mentioned a little bit about shades like green. shades of green. I did a little bit more research and I want to talk a little bit more about some of the pricing for shades of green yeah. and stuff like that. Mark brings up a great point when it comes to the pricing for military tickets. We're saving that for another video too. So mm -hmm. we will be talking about that anyway. <laughs> um, okay. So what I think is the best way or, excuse me, hold on, because there's so much to say. There's so many different ways to go. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to deciding what ticket is right for you, I think that there are a few different ways to go. So obviously, there's the number of days that you can visit. Yep. So, you know, that's going to help dictate what ticket you want to purchase. Yep. Um, and then there's how you want to do your trip. So a lot of people, especially people who want to try and save a little bit of money, they like to go the route of buying one park per day ticket. Mm -hmm. So like a base ticket for every day of their trip rather than doing the park hopper. So there are pros to that. There are cons to that. Do you have any thoughts on base tickets? Well, I think um, it's kind of tough, I feel like, because like the base ticket is totally fine. Uh, and I feel like I could spend a day in one park. Mm -hmm. Any park. Like, I can spend a full day from sunrise to sunset in, like, Animal Kingdom. And everyone's like, it's not even a full park day. I, I don't care. For me, for me personally, like, I'm fine with that. So if I'm dictating a vacation on that, um, then I'm fine not having a park hopper option. Mm -hmm. 
You know what I mean? So, like, I'm okay. There, there's other things that I would do outside of having parkour. Like, I wouldn't feel like I need to add it on just in case. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I need to go to Magic Kingdom, and then I have to get over Epcot today. Mm. You know what I mean? So, like, you can save a couple bucks. Yeah. On the flip side, I think that if you're... If your method of saving money is saving time, the park hopper can definitely be the way to go. Yeah. So, so for example, right? Um, or one day, it actually it all depends. Well, yeah. Okay. So let me explain what I'm saying first. So, <laughs> yeah, like, go for it. so if what you're trying to do is save time versus save money, mm-hmm. um, or your method of saving money is saving time, and what I mean by that is, so. There are four theme parks at Walt Disney World. Mm-hmm. If you want to do all four of them on one with the base ticket, that means that you have to have basically four or five nights at a hotel. Right. Even the cheap hotel, which we did do a number crunching for that, so go check that out on the channel. But even the cheap but not stupid cheap and unrealistic hotel mm-hmm. is still going to be more money at some point. You know, there's mm-hmm. going to be more meals at some point. It depends on even if you have that time off, maybe you're not talking about saving money in the sense of, um, you know, how much you're spending on your vacation, but maybe you don't have like vacation time, you know, like you, you have unpaid leave. Mm-hmm. And if that's the case and you're like, well, I can really only afford to take three days unpaid leave off or I can take two paid leave, one unpaid or whatever, you know how people work numbers like that, right. then... In that case, it might actually be much more affordable to do two-day trip mm-hmm. with Park Hopper. Sure. Versus doing, like, a, a whole um, four, four days, days oh, with totally. a single ticket. And that's why, actually, um, kind of as a side note, we did a video, or not a video, we did a post over on the website, so twofoolishmortals.com, where we talked about whether or not you could afford to do a Disney trip on a tax return. Now, of course, everyone's tax return is different, but I went off the basic the like, average. average American tax return, mm-hmm. and I think it like came in like $2,870 or something like that. Right. And in that, what I chose to do was go ahead and do a two-day park hopper. Right. And that actually worked out for this family of four that we were discussing Mm -hmm. because um, although we we wouldn't be able to do everything Mm -hmm. in those two days, I really do think you could get like a taste of a park in the morning, a taste of the park in in the evening, and you could see, you know, that allows you to do two fireworks shows and still see morning, you know what I mean? Like you can see all four parks. Yeah, in and, my opinion. And that's the thing, right? So when looking at this real quick, just to show you some numbers, right? Mm-hmm. So a single park ticket, at, like we said, is like 109 mm-hmm. uh, obviously before taxes and stuff like that. Um, but this for a park hopper for one day jumps to 199 199 yeah. Yeah. So, like, you do technically save money even on, like, an additional park ticket is And it's important to keep in mind that one day tickets are the most expensive. Yeah. So, um, and I don't mean like the base ticket, but buying a ticket for just one day at Walt Disney World is not a value. No. The, the tickets start... become more affordable the longer your ticket is. Yeah, three days and longer. Mm-hmm. Three days and longer, you start actually getting some discounts and start saving some cash. Yeah. So it really depends on what your trip looks like. That's something to to keep in mind. That's something to really be aware of. So, for example, um, in this case, so a one-day ticket is 109. These are starting at. A one-day ticket starts at 109, two days, 107, three days, 106, four days, also 106, Mm -hmm. five days, 91, six days, 78, seven, 69, eight days, 64, 9 days, 59, and a 10-day ticket is $55, and that's all per day. So the longer you're there, the more affordable the ticket per day becomes. And the same is true with the park hopper. Although it is an increase in price, Mm -hmm. it's not as drastic a number by the time you get to that 10-day. And I need to make a correction. I, I misspoke regarding starting saving money after three days or longer. 
Mm-hmm. Okay. So obviously the for three days it was one oh six and then four days it was one oh six. You don't say you save money per the site when you don't buy it at the window for three days or longer. That's where okay. you save money. Like that you actually if you don't buy online. If you're yeah. a person who goes to the parks without having a ticket already purchased and you're buying same Which day the from the window, plan. bad idea. Never do that. Please yeah. don't do that. Um you actually save money by purchasing it online and not buying it at the window. So that's the savings there, you go. there for three days or longer. Um, so things get complicated if you're doing more than 10 days. And I know that there are people out there who are thinking to themselves, why would you be visiting for more than 10 days? Well, there are plenty of reasons. <laughs> um, one of them is if you happen to have a family who works in education. I grew up with, family well even I worked in education yeah. for a long time so you don't have the opportunity to do a lot of little vacations mm-hmm. but you have an opportunity to do one big two vacation weeks. maybe yeah. it's two weeks maybe it's three weeks um, it gets a little bit more complicated because Disney only sells 10 day tickets at the max mm-hmm. so let's say you have a 14 day vacation that means that you can get your first 10 days for $55 per ticket. But then if you want to get tickets for those other four days, it's going to be $106 for those other four yeah. days. And this is where things are going to get interesting when we start talking about crunching numbers as well. Um, you really have to be aware of what it is that you're doing and how many days you want to buy tickets for if you do plan on being at Disney the whole time, mm-hmm. if you're staying really long. Yep. Okay. Anything else to say before we move on? Because this is a lot. I feel like it's a lot of There's information. So There's a lot to say. Yeah, and we're not even talking about the other options yet. Oh, yeah. So that's another thing altogether. But so the way that I look at this, I'm just going to start from the big tickets and move our way down. Okay. Because mm-hmm. the real thing, I feel like the people who are really here and they want to know about crunching numbers is should I buy an annual pass? Especially when they come available. I'm sure that there are some of you out there who are watching that thinking that very thing. Should I buy an annual pass when they become available or should I stick to base tickets and park hoppers and or park hoppers? Yep. So um, that's something that we're really going to look at here. Okay. I've got a bunch of numbers, so give me a second. (laughs) I should just do like an intermission song and dance for the people while you get ready. Okay. So, making him choke on his coffee. Okay, so park tickets, a one-day park ticket is what we're going off of. Um, Mark just said something when I read what he has to say. Takes a second, because I can see it here. I can see you pop up in front of me, but I can't see it very well, and it takes a second for it to show up on the computer down here. What did Mark have to say? Um, Yes, at which point, uh, number of days visited, does an annual pass pay for itself? Okay. So... There are a few different ways to do this, but the way that I choose to do this every time is I look at the, and I actually have all this math. You wouldn't believe it, but I have this math. Um, <laughs> it's right here. Um, I look at the starting price for tickets um, to figure out this number, and here's why, okay? <clears throat> the starting price while we could be looking at 10 day tickets, mm-hmm. the starting price doesn't, isn't quite as much as you're gonna pay most days, okay? So I feel like it balances itself out mm-hmm. for if you were buying multiple day tickets, mm-hmm. okay? And of course there's so much, right? Um, so when it comes to that, this is how we're gonna do our numbers, is based on that starting. A one day ticket, base ticket is $109, mm-hmm. okay? A one-day park hopper mm-hmm. starts at $174. Which is what's recently jumped. So that so, has recently jumped to $199. Yeah. We, ju- we did the numbers right before all this stuff went down. So you're so. going to have to bear with us. Yeah. We're going to crunch them live. <laughs> live and in person. Okay. So um, an annual pass. Let's see. The Increda Pass, yeah. which is available to everyone with no blockout dates, is roughly thirteen hundred dollars. Mm-hmm. Okay, now that does not include the water parks. Nope. That does not include anymore um, the photo pass. Okay, nope. 
So we're not going to talk about that in this equation because you'd be paying more for that regardless. Right. But obviously it includes har uh, part hopping. Yes. So it is, um, it's not quite apples to apples with buying a base ticket. We, that's just right off the bat. Not right. apples to apples. We would have to only be talking about park hoppers, but we're not going to. So, roughly speaking, let's see. I think I have, if you were to go, um, so, check my math on this. Because yeah. if you were to go, because it's about $1,300, like I mm -hmm. said, yep. at $109 a day, mm -hmm. You would have to go, I believe it's 10 times. 12, round 12, up. okay. So, forgive me there for a second. So at $109 a day, you'd have to go 12 times, or rather purchase 12 base tickets. Right. If to you make were, it worth it. And, and that's, of course, obviously now going in uh, su succession, right? That's the right word. We're, we're not going consistently. Ten, like ten days in a row, for example, we're we're peppering in days. Yeah, throughout these aren't the, year. the discounted. No, prices, we're not talking about discounts. But as I said, yeah, since the price is only a hundred nine dollars starting, mm -hmm. I feel like that kind of balances itself out a little bit because some days are a hundred and forty, some days are a hundred and sixty. <laughs> During Christmas, it can get two hundred and ten. Also, and that's the thing. So that's why I'm saying, like, at its, at its bait, at its. Mm, Cheapest price, mm -hmm. you would at twelve days, is when it is when it is worth it. Yep. You following? Is that making sense? I'm gonna say it one more time. So, if you were to buy a base ticket mm -hmm. for twelve days, that would be equal to what you're paying if you were just buying an annual pass. Right. Now. For the sake of number crunching, but also mm -hmm. without getting too into the weeds here, mm -hmm. the annual pass is also going to include free parking. Mm -hmm. It's also going to be a park hopper. So like I said, it's not quite apples to apples here. Mm -hmm. um, you're not getting, you're getting more than you would be getting. Mm -hmm. um, and there's also a ton of discounts that you get with an annual pass. Huge amounts. So. Up to 20, I think like 20% off. Yeah, across the board, in like, some cases. Yeah, it's, in some cases. There's a lot of discounts that you can get with that mm -hmm. annual pass. So, like I said, I don't really like saying it like this because it would, it would, the value of the annual pass would be much greater than 12 days of right. a base ticket because it's not yeah, the same it's thing. it's not the same thing. It's not. You know? But, for the sake of discussion, yes, 12 days of a base ticket. Mm -hmm. Now, that said... What about the park hopper? Can you pull up the calculator and do that yeah, number so for us here? For a single park day? Yes. So yeah. that's $199. Yeah, roughly. Like yes. I said, it's, 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 we're doing rough numbers here. Um, yeah. So. Um, do, 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 do. Yeah. Divided by, there's obviously a party going on <laughs> in our building. So. Six and a half. So again, we'll round up to seven. Yes. So if you were doing a park hopper, mm -hmm. it would be from 174. So according to what we have on the website, the price has gone up to 199 for the park hopper. Yeah. So hold on. Let me. Let me. And maybe I misclicked. Unless you misclicked. I definitely misclicked. Okay. So we yeah, have to do that again. So. Oh no no I'm sorry yeah no it um. Yeah, oh, you were talking about the price of that, the current price yeah. to buy the ticket. Okay. Correction. Yeah, it starts at 174 okay. <clears throat> So starting at 174 With the park hopper, it then jumps I to 194 bad. No, but then it jumps to 194 yes. You can get 174 Yeah, but what I'm saying is you can't find a ticket for 109 either, but we're doing our math based on the starting on price. So I would like you to go to the calculator for me. Shoot, some of these numbers jump really high. Yeah, they jump really high, oh, but again... My apologies. So... Let me do the, the 170. Yes. Okay. So... I'm just doing, I'm just seeing, I'm just seeing the final prices. This I, is, you know, I know. I try my best. Well, and this is the hard part, right? While he's crunching that. The hard part is that it all depends on when you're going. 7.47. 
Seven point four seven. You so interrupted eight, me. Eight days. I was in the middle of speaking. Um, seven point four seven. So seven days, because mm -hmm. that's not how rounding works. <laughs> it's true. You'd round down. Yeah, um, right. So you'd have to pat. You'd have to buy seven days of park tickets mm -hmm. with Park Hopper to equate to one annual pass. Now again, that's the starting at price. We can look at more realistic numbers here in a second, and we can we'll do just that. But um, and again, that also is going to include parking mm -hmm. when you get the annual pass. It's also going to include those discounts. There are people out there, by the way, who will just buy one annual pass for someone in their family. Yeah. Um, for the discounts. For the discounts, for because the free parking. Because they crunch numbers. And honestly, I'm sure it can work. I'm not sure what that would look like as far as like, I guess it depends. You're spending a little bit more. If you're really using your annual pass discount and you're really, you're driving, you're doing the parking thing, mm -hmm. I could see how that could be worth it, but I'm sure. not sure I don't know. Um, for me personally. Anyway, um, so... So it'd be 12 days of single tickets, seven days of park hopper tickets mm -hmm. to make it worth it. Now, another benefit to buying an annual pass, of course, they're not for sale right now, but another benefit to buying annual passes is that if you plan your trips accordingly, let's say you I, do what? Sorry, no. I was. I wanted to know where this 174 day magically appears on this calendar. There is a select few dates where it's yes, 174. it's like September 7th. Yeah, the end of August. And, it's the low. It's the low season. And yeah, and the, it's start of school. Yeah. Um. Also, before I, you know, just read that comment because I kind of lost. I am my so thing. sorry. I, I am a mess today. With I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not doing good. Uh, is it true that not all of the annual passes include comp complimentary parking anymore? Um, I don't know that that's true. I can go hunting. Um, if, if it is true... Wouldn't surprise me. It is going to probably be for the Pixie Pass, those, like, lowest tier passes. Um... The Incredit Pass does include parking. Mm -hmm. And I think the DVC pass does include parking as well. The only big thing to be aware of, and we'll talk more about annual passes some other time, like we'll go into the big specifics, is that the number of reservations you can hold as an annual pass holder does change depend on depending on the nut, the type of pass you have. So the Incredit pass Again, the most expensive of the passes. Um, yeah, all annual passes have standard theme yeah. park park parking. Um, per, per this sheet as of right now. Yeah, yeah, so that's the current information. Current information. Uh, yeah, so all annual passes include parking. Although this is... Period. Well, th but this is crazy, though, right? So, like, we're talking about, like, the, the passes are just changing. This is from August of last year. This but the passes, the passes aren't changing. The annual passes aren't changing. No, I'm just saying, if there was a change, like Mark's saying, if he might have heard that somewhere, you know, that's kind of old news. But then again, you know, August isn't that far behind, I guess. No, I don't think so. No. Um, but no, the all the annual pass, that's, when I say that that's the most current stuff, is that is that's, the most current annual pass. When I'm clicking on the website, that's, that's not like legacy information. No, 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 no. That's um, so what was I saying? Oh, goodness gracious. You should just do this one without me. The annual passes, you can have different... Depending on the annual pass you get, there are different benefits. Um, but the biggest benefit to be aware of is that there are some annual passes that let you hold different amounts of reservations. The most expensive pass that's available to everyone has the most number of reservations you can hold at one time. Um, oh, this yeah. is what I was trying to say. Shh. Shh. Um, another real big perk of purchasing an annual pass that people talk about over and over again, especially if you don't live in Florida, because not everyone who buys an annual pass is someone who lives there and goes all the time. Mm -hmm. In fact, 
I'm an annual pass holder. I don't live in Florida. Mm -hmm. And I've been an annual pass holder multiple times in my life. And I've never lived in Florida. And I've never traveled to Disney as frequently as I have in the past year. Sure. This is kind of just like a, a fluke, like, I'm going to the sunshine kind of situation. But a real big perk of having an annual pass or purchasing an annual pass is if you know you're going to make trips during around the same time every year. Mm -hmm. So... Since that pass is good for 12 months, and it is to the day, so make sure you're aware of that, if you plan your vacations accordingly, yeah. you could get two family vacations out of that one annual pass. So, let's, We've done it. Let's, yeah, we've done <laughs> we've it ourselves. We've literally done it. it actually so let's out. say that you always go for you know, whatever week. You always go for the first week in April, mm -hmm. every single year. Yeah. Um, and maybe sometimes it's the second week in April, sometimes it's the first week in April, whatever. You can plan your vacation so that you do that one week, mm -hmm. get your annual pass, get your um, park hop, essentially the ability to park hop, get your discounts, get your parking if you're the type of person who drives down or does all that stuff. Yeah. Get your parking for free, which is a huge value, by the way. And then schedule next year's vacation to be within that annual pass, the dates that that annual pass is valid, and all you have to worry about is the hotels and other expenses because yeah. your park tickets are covered. This is something that people do all the time. It's something my family did, and it was a huge value um, because one of the, I mean, we, we did this before ourselves, but... Yeah. One of the things that we would do is we would do like two-week vacations, sometimes three-week vacations, like I said, educators, right? So we would do like a two- or three-week vacation, get annual passes for everyone, which was a huge value and still would be a huge value right now. Yeah. And then we would just adjust our vacation to fall within the annual pass annual being pass, valid, yeah. and we would essentially get, for the price of, assuming we were talking about today's prices, right, but for the price of... Um, 12 one day base tickets, mm -hmm. we would be able to get like 21. Yeah. Or, you know what I mean, 40 or whatever it was. And, and here's the thing I definitely want to add this. Do you mind if I, yeah, mind go if I for jump it. in? I don't want to mess up. 40. What am I talking about? Well, no, so you're kind of. 20, 24. Yeah, so you're very close to that actually. Yeah. Even, so, like, we're going to go based off of these standards right now. So, if you did a 10 day uh, with a park hopper, that ends up being um, roughly $700 mm -hmm. per person, yes. right? So you're looking at roughly two sets of 10 days to equate to an Incredipass, mm -hmm. roughly. You know, it, obviously rounding this, that, and the other. But in the end, you still get the annual pass discounts plus the free parking. It's still cheaper to go with the annual pass, obviously. Mm -hmm. Like... There's a reason why you go that route. It's just and the way are, to go. And there are plenty of other reasons that you might want to consider an annual pass, even if you don't do big, long vacations. So, um, as you guys know, we went in summer of mm -hmm. 2021, and just his ticket alone was nearly $400 for three days. Yeah, three days. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's a huge chunk of change mm -hmm. especially if you're going to be visiting a few times and i know there are plenty of people out there who like to go back a couple you know a weekend here a weekend there mm -hmm. if you're talking about it like that maybe you go for a couple days here a couple days there three days you go on a cruise you want to stop at disney for a few days yeah. annual pass might be something you want to consider might be something you want to crunch the numbers on especially do the specific numbers if this is you um, do the specific numbers based on the dates you're looking at because that's when you're going to get the most accurate and quite frankly, that's when the the annual pass, the value of an annual pass is really going to shine, mm -hmm. you know, because, you know, we're sitting here saying, oh, well, you know, with the park hopper, you could do seven days and blah, 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 and that's great based on this, the $174 price mm -hmm. but if we start talking about you know christmas time or peak seasons where it's 200 plus per day that annual pass is going to look really good really fast yeah for sure you know hi snorkel hi welcome back uh we're just crunching numbers yeah just like we're talking um yeah, um, and I think the thing is, too, is especially, like, right now, the one thing, uh, I know, Mark, you were talking about um, 
parking uh, being taken away, potentially being taken away from some passes. But the one thing that definitely was taken away was the memory maker. Yeah. Um, so, real names, Amber. Amber, there you go. Hi, Amber. <laughs> so you don't have to have to call her snorkel. snorkel. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yes. Um, I think there was, just kind of going back, I think there was a rumor that they were going to take away parking. They may have taken away parking from Disneyland. Oof. Not all the Disneyland Well, at least you don't have, have a Magic Kingdom parking. hike. Yeah, so. God. But anyway... That's neither here nor there. That's a whole yeah. different thing. Um, yeah, so the downsides, which, again, we'll get more into when we talk specifically about annual passes, but the downsides to the change is that annual passes no longer include photo pass. Yep. Um, that's one that is definitely taken away. So now if you want to add... I mean, if you want to add water parks, it's always been an additional charge, and now there's going to mm -hmm. be an additional charge again if you want that annual pass. That's not even worth mentioning, in my opinion, because... I mean, it's it's always been like that. Right. When it comes to the photo pass, that's the real big disappointment for me. Um, photo pass used to be included, um, so you could get your memory maker photos or memory maker, I should say, used to be included mm -hmm. in your annual pass. It's no longer included in any of the annual passes. You have to pay. I think it's a hundred dollars to add it onto your annual pass specifically. It is 169 if you are um, doing other ticket. tickets, like yeah. a, not annual pass. So it is more affordable if you have the annual pass. If you're really looking at crunching those numbers, you can kind of add that to the value of the annual pass, mm -hmm. in my opinion. Um, but, you know, really just depends. And, and with anything else, when it comes to the annual pass, I feel like it's, of course, it's going to be more worth it the more you use it. Mm -hmm. But where it really starts to shine is when you're... Um, so, sorry, I wanted to do this real quick. Mm -hmm. It was $70 for a one-day pass for Magic Maker. Uh, Memory Maker. Memory Maker. It's $70. Yes. It was 170 when a I had it when a length of stay. Yeah. yeah. Um, so that's why I say like seventy dollars is a. It, I mean, it's still a hundred bucks. Yeah. Really. Um, yeah. So that's just another one of those things to just be aware of. If you really want to start crunching numbers and you really, you know, um, but the value of having the annual pass really comes in with those discounts, especially if you spend a lot of time at table service dining because you get discounts on that, which ends up being like because because it is like twenty percent off. So it's basically like you get the tip for free. You know sure. what I mean? Um, so basically, AP covers the cost of the tip. Um, and then parking is a huge one. That's really, really nice. If you want to do, val especially if you want to do, not valet, what is it called? Premium parking? Like the parking yeah, that's up yeah. front? Mm, yeah. It's also a really good value because while you still have to pay additional for that because the standard parking is all that it's going to cover, I mean, you're only paying basically 20 bucks to do that premium parking versus right. the standards. Mm -hmm. What do we got? Uh, yeah, so um, Mark was saying uh, two of four of Disneyland's annual passes include parking. One does not, and one is 50% parking. So that's yeah, so probably that, that, that was might the one. be it. Uh, Mark was saying two active uh, military can get memory maker for $89 per visit. Sorry, $98 uh, per visit. And then um, Amber was saying 169 if you book before your trip uh, for the duration, 199 under uh, three days prior. Yes, thank you. That's a good point, too. So, <sighs> I, you know, frankly, I think that if you want to do Memory Maker, which I have some mixed feelings on Memory Maker currently, maybe that's going to change now that the new policies are in place, okay? All I think of is you with Tinkerbell, and you were just like... Like Tinkerbell. Oh, I can't stand Tinkerbell. I know I'm going to make no friends saying that. But no, Tinkerbell is no. not my favorite. Not a Tinkerbell fan. And they were like, let's do a magic shot. And I was like, yay! Figment! And they were like, oh! And I was like, oh, it's going to be Figment. It's all this Epcot. And I love Epcot. Oh, my God! And then it came through, and I waited, and I looked, and I refreshed, and I refreshed, and it was Tinkerbell. Oh, it was great. And then I had moments, like, the next time we went, they had me do the pose again, and I was like, this is Tinkerbell. This is no, no then, did you get Remy? It was Remy, thank goodness. Thank goodness. I would have not. It would have been a thing. <sighs> I hate Stitch. <laughs> Mark, that's it. 
then we can't be friends. <laughs> Sorry. That's where it's at. I'm a diehard anyway, Stitch fan. Sorry. Um, Love them. Um, anybody has a question? Sure. See, I have a question. I'm telling you. It's a fe- <laughs> we, we have ideas. Anyways. Um, sorry I was late. First no of all, problem. don't ever apologize. Um, if you have an annual pass, the expensive one, can you park off? Yes, yes, you can. So we talked about this, but I'm going to say it again because I think it's a really important thing to say. Mm-hmm. So the real, um, when we, t- we compare park tickets. So what we did is we kind of looked at the, the starting price for park tickets, both for base tickets and for park hoppers. Mm-hmm. So the starting price for a base ticket is $109. You're really only going to pay that if you're doing like off season, but that's the one that only allows you to go to one park per day. And if you are doing that, you want to see how many days it is before an annual pass is worth it. You're going to have to do 12 days for that to be worth it, yeah. okay? But it's it's apples to oranges, okay? Because that, that one-day ticket, those one-day tickets, don't allow you to park hop. If we're talking about park hopping, that's when it becomes much greater value, mm-hmm. in my opinion. So to buy, you'd have to buy seven park hopper, seven one-day park hoppers to equate to the price of an annual pass. Um, and that doesn't count for parking or discounted, well, actually discounted memory maker, because if you think about it, it is still discounted, even though you have to pay additional. While it used to be free, sad crying yeah. face, um, now you have to pay for it, but it's still uh, good. Is that a seven-day pass or seven individual passes? Seven individual passes at $174 per day now while i totally can see where you're coming from if you're questioning like well that you know don't pride don't tickets get more affordable as you go yes however tickets also are more expensive during different times of the year yeah, it's that's kind of we went in russ is going to crunch it real quick though For seven he's going to poke i it, love poke, doing this poke the numbers this is what i love doing. um so of course when it comes to these it depends on what time yeah, of so year. Yeah, it all depends. You're visiting, mm-hmm. okay? So, if you're looking at, let's say Seven days July, for the park hopper, yeah, it's a, six four. I'm sorry. In July, for a seven day park hopper, it is six hundred and forty dollars per ticket. Yeah. Okay. Roughly um, ninety five dollars. Wait, a day. what did she say? That's important. Yep, I'm on it. We are staying for 10 days. With Hopper and Genie Plus, and we have a seven-day pass. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, so if you're staying for 10 days, well, I mean, you have a seven-day pass. So there you go. So that that mm-hmm. price, it, you, you made out just fine doing that like that, um, depending on when you're visiting. Can you go to December? Because I'm really curious as to yeah. know what the December is. Sure. So... Obviously, it's going to change, mm-hmm. um, and we're not. We didn't take the time today to crunch every single scenario because we would be here all evening trying to find out exactly what day. So, for example, um, December actually December only jumps to a hundred and three dollars a day. So that would be what seven twenty. So seven twenty. Mm-hmm. So. Um, Seven hundred and twenty dollars for the seven day park hopper. Seven day park hopper. That's not not including the During genie December, plus. Not including genie yeah, plus. Yeah, if you jump add, add the genie plus, I think it was like yeah. another hundred dollars. So of course, like it depends on when how you're going. That's mm-hmm. kind of what we were talking about earlier as well, is it depends on how you're going and how you're gonna buy your tickets. If you're someone who goes for just a few days at a time, the annual pass might be a better option. Versus if you're going for a long stretch, where the park hopper would be a perfectly legit option, especially if you're not driving, that's when you're going to start to see, at least if you have one person in your party, Mm -hmm. sometimes people will buy only one annual pass because they can get the free parking. And um, you also get that 20% off at different shopping locations as well as dining. So that might be where you see for some people the price kind of change. And another thing that we mentioned before you showed up that I think is an important thing to keep in mind is if you are 
of course, annual passes aren't available right now, so you can only do what you can do, right? Mm -hmm. But if you are someone who vacations at the same time every year or a similar time every year, maybe you're a teacher or something like that, um, an annual pass can be a great option because you can, if you work work the scheduling just right, you can get two vacations for the price of one as far as park tickets go. Yeah. You know, so um, let's say you're doing that park hopper we just talked about, the one that you mentioned around $600, mm -hmm. $700, let's say for the sake of discussion, per person. Mm -hmm. If you were going to do a similar vacation with the same numbers next year, you know, same dates and whatever, actually it might be a good value because they might raise the prices. But you could get, what, $1,400 worth of tickets plus 20% off food and all that yeah. stuff. Um, not paying the increase in price on that one annual pass, which you can get for $1,300. Mm -hmm. uh, see what she said here real quick, because then I want to jump back. I know, there's like so much I'm saying so fast, but I hope that it, I'm doing all right. Okay, yeah, so she, uh, it, it, she means that like, you couldn't buy them if we wanted to, but was just curious. And yeah. I want to go back to that for one second uh, after this. Uh, but you said, uh, we normally wouldn't get the park hopper with a three-year-old, but we're on the monorail, and uh, my hubby loves all kinds of food, so I thought it would be great uh, to be able to hop to Epcot for dinner. Hashtag teacher vacation life. Yeah, and that's what we were talking about as well, is, like, I grew up in a family of educators. I worked in, like, the same mm -hmm. schedule. Yep. Um, and so it depends on... You know, you do your vacations when you can, how you can, whatever. Um, but, yeah, what were you saying about that? Yeah, so, like, and this is the thing, right? So, like, depending on when you're going, mm -hmm. um, I don't know, I don't have the exact information when it comes to the blackout dates. But, for example, like, you can go with, actually, the Pirate Pass. It, well, and the problem is if you're a Florida resident. Yeah, so this is why we aren't even really talking about I know, and it's that. so frustrating because it's, like, it's $700. That's $700. If you were a Florida resident, then you can not only knock out your seven days at yeah. that cost, but you get the 20% off, so you have at least one person grab that sucker, yeah. and then you can knock out all the And that's the, the, the big problem. Yeah, the driving from... Uh, Maryland. Maryland, yeah. So And that's one of the things, you know, again, like you said, the pars the... The passes aren't even available, so... Yeah, you can't even touch it. It wouldn't have made any difference for you no. right now. But... It's frustrating. Especially if you are planning on... Well, and you know, you're staying on the monorail loop. So the park hopper is a really great option because you can go really easy to different parks. Yep. I feel the same way when it comes to the park hopper if you're staying in the Epcot area. Or really, you know, like the monorail loop. Anywhere that is so close to the park that you can just go to the park really easy or hop to a different park really, really easy. Um, I love having the park hopper. Earlier we were talking about like, you know, if it's necessary or whatever. I love having park hoppers because I really like to take advantage, especially if you're on a shorter trip. I like to take advantage of, I like to do what I want to do when I want to do it, you know? And I like to be able to say, you know, I'm starting my day at Magic Kingdom, but I'm going to go watch Harmonious. Ugh. I can't believe I said that. I can't believe you just said that. <laughs> well, because Harmonious like, is what's available. Like, I started Not, not go Kingdom. get fish and chips from the UK pavilion. No, no, I'm going to watch Harmonious. Well, Why even have a park it, hopper then? Well, I've talked <laughs> about this before because I like the I like the ability to, you know, you could watch even two fireworks shows in one night. It's true. And Amber, please don't not see Harmonious because we're just no, not the biggest fan. No, see Harmonious. It's just please see it. it. It's, yeah. <laughs> it's actually lovely. Yeah. I actually really like a lot of it. I just have some feelings that originally was are what they at, are. Yeah. Uh, Amber said she originally uh, was booked at Boardwalk. Oh, that's a great resort. So did you switch then is the question. And then if you switch, which did you switch to? I don't recall if she said a while back. I don't remember. She said monorail loop, so. Monorail loop. But where, where on the monorail loop? We we've been just we've actually just been going back and forth on all kinds of yeah. resorts and talking and just talking about where we want to Oh, that's exciting! I have not stayed at the Contemporary yet. Mm -hmm. I had I was actually during the crazy trip of spring 2021. I was supposed to stay at the Contemporary for one night, and I managed yeah. to kick that to the curb and get <laughs> multiple nights in one place. I hope you get the new incredible, like the, oh, incredible, the incredible rooms. rooms? Yeah, that would I'd be really, really cool. Yeah, it'd be really cool if you do. They look pretty awesome. I like how they've like really themed them out. Um, oh, that's really cool. You know, um, I have wanted to stay there 
I couldn't stay there during my last trip or last year at all. Um, but it's like, I feel like it's this underrated Disney resort that no one ever talks about. Okay, so I have, I have questions. I wanna, we're going to go to the comments real quick, and then I have questions for okay. Amber. <clears throat> okay, so Marco's saying, uh, because we go as often as we do, one to three times per year, we don't really feel a need for park hopper anymore. I totally get that. I, I can I, I can relate to that. Yeah, it's just, all about sometimes how you, don't you do it. It's all perspective. It's all about how you do your vacation. How you do your vacation. Um, okay, and then Amber said, stayed at Coronado last year for two nights for a trail Disney run. Trial. 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 I need to put another set of glasses on that. Might, yeah. might work better for me. Um, and then uh, we are in the garden suites, uh, but they are being remodeled. Okay. So they're not in Incredible Room. They're not in Incredible Room. But they are being remodeled? Maybe they'll be remodeled by the time they get there. They very well, maybe. Who knows? I, I know there's, they're, they're working hard on them. We'll so. have to see. Fingers are crossed for you. We'll see what happens. I, I misread the comment. So first of all, I definitely want to go to Coronado Springs. We've never been. Uh, I want to at least visit the resort. Yeah. Um, I want to see it. Because uh, I remember when it was actually first opened, like, I got sucked in immediately to the whole idea of it. Yeah. And I definitely want to go. Coronado was great. It had a great King Water view. Their huge transportation was issue. Only bu hashtag buses. Yeah. Okay. So, and that's the thing. That's That was one of my concerns is bus only resorts can get a little rough. You know, Animal yeah. Kingdom Lodge and stuff like that. You but know, that's also because, and, and if I'm being completely honest, it's because we've been so spoiled to most. So we're Disney Vacation Club members, and so we stay in deluxe resorts mm -hmm. um, almost all the time. And yep. now, after staying at the Swan, I'm hooked on that, on the Swan or Dolphin, if I can't stay at a deluxe resort. Yeah, if you don't, we don't and, have stuff here. Um, deluxe resorts always almost always have multiple forms of transportation to get to different places. And so I am crazy about like staying in the Epcot area and being able to walk or take a boat or take, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? The Skyliner or, you know what I mean? So, and that's the thing, right? So like, I don't even like the idea of staying at uh, the Riviera um, purely based on the fact that you have minimal, you have, you have buses, which is nice, but like, I just don't trust the Skyliner enough to get me where I want to go. You have to trust go. issues with the Skyliner. I do, because I've seen that thing go down and it's just ugly, you know? <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I've but always I, liked I buses. I understand what you're saying, though. I, totally like, I actually don't have a whole lot of problems with the buses, but I do understand what you're saying is like different resorts can be a struggle. There's a struggle bus mm -hmm. going to those particular resorts. That is for sure. So, um, what did she say? Okay, yeah. So, yeah. um, uh, is that why you're driving this time, Amber? And then Amber said, I never saw a line at buses. We we drove, took the auto train. Uh, the walk from Magic Kingdom back to the car after fireworks is what made us make the move to contemporary. Oh, my goodness. Oh, so you, you also experienced the walk of horror that was. It was you parked in Simba and you have to walk literally i think i did i did a google maps well was that okay let's be let's be yes um <laughs> let's be clear did you do this like during during the pandemic times when there were no trams is i'm assuming that that's what you mean yeah it, because it, we're, I oh think yeah we're, because she said last year as a yeah. trial right yeah okay so, yeah. so because yeah. i'll tell you yeah we parked we did it we, and we parked in for simba the first time ever well no no we we didn't drive for the first time ever, but we were staying off property, mm -hmm. which a point I wanted to make about annual passes is I think that there's definitely a, a additional value if you're staying off property and you're going to be parking. It's a little bit different if you're driving and then parking at your resort and you're going to be staying there um, and taking Disney transportation. But if you're driving to the parks, that's the other $25 per day or mm -hmm. whatever. Um I definitely could see how maybe that would be another reason to consider the annual pass, whereas if you're staying on property, the parking isn't really a thing. Right. Um, but, goodness gracious, that walk that was wrong. terrible. I And, you know, I have to say, there was, if there was one thing, I, I know Disney is making decisions that they make, but if there was one thing that I was, like, cursing the Disney gods about as mm -hmm. I was walking back, I was like, how is it that, like, well, during that time, I know that everyone has forgotten about this already, but during that time, masks were not required at Walt Disney World. So this was like mm -hmm. the in-between times before things went back to wearing masks. Right. And I was like, how on earth 
can Disney not require masks indoors or anything like that and be like, because it's safe enough to be indoors, but they couldn't have the trams running. I was mm-hmm. like, you've got to be kidding me. Not to get like all into like Disney's decisions about health and safety policies, but I was like, you got to be kidding me because I'm like, I'm dying here. Yeah. I, yeah. I actually, fun little fact that we didn't really talk about, but like I had a minor meltdown that day that we went to Magic Kingdom in the evening. Because we parked so far back. It was a rough day. And I, I literally, I said, Russ, we have to call the line and see. Before we even leave the car, I want to call the line and see if we can even park hop to this park. Like, to, Hopefully we can. Because if we can't, I am not walking yeah, because we whatever it yeah, was, forty five minutes. It was before we could even tell if a park was at capacity for yeah. park hopper time. Yeah, it was before it was, that was a thing. You'd have to call the line to find out. And yeah. Anyway. Yeah. So like Mark was saying, trick. Even if you're not staying in a monorail hotel, take the resort's monorail uh, back from Magic Kingdom back to TTC. You're a hundred percent right. We, you know, we take a boat. You take the monorail. The walk is ridiculous. It ends up being like over half a mile. The problem wasn't. The problem wasn't getting from the resort to the TTC for us. No, it was from getting to the TCC to, to our car. To the car, yeah. Because after big a one. full day, I think it was almost like 9.30 at night after fireworks and yeah. stuff. Like, it was, and it was like and 90 degrees parked. plus. Now, fortunately, I'm very familiar with the resort layouts. And yeah. I had recently stayed at the Polynesian. And where we were parked was closer to the Polynesian than it was to the Ticket and Transportation Center. Yeah, we ended up using the, as like they the call it, the, the member, cast member bridge. Bridge, yeah. Um, so, and that's what we ended up doing. Yeah, so when I, when all of this was said and done, yeah. and I kind of looked at where we were, I was like, oh no, we're like right near the Polynesian. Mm-hmm. I'm not walking to the Ticket and Transportation Center. Mm-hmm. So we just walked, because it was, oh my goodness, you, oh, hold on. I just had a realization live and in person. The Ticket and Transportation Center was clear across the Polynesian Resort from where we were parked. Yes, we were in the exact opposite corner. So, like, we weren't even, like, we were, we would mm-hmm. have had to walk clear across the That's Polynesian why we didn't do it. further. Yes. I know, but I'm just like, yeah. I know that I was like, it's closer here, but it didn't occur to me until, like, this very second that I'm like, no, we were across the resort. Yeah. from that. So, what we ended up doing is we just walked straight from where we were to. What is basically the about in front ish of the bus stop area? Yep. Um, so that's not quite right, but basically we walked across the street instead of going through the ticketed transportation center and walking all that way through the parking lot. We just walked clear across the street over this little bridge. It was like through the cast member parking lot, if I remember correctly. Yeah. And then we walked straight through the through resort the to past get Trader Sam's. Past Trader Sam's <laughs> to get boat. to the boat that yeah. goes directly from the Polynesian to the Magic Kingdom entrance. Yep. Worked um, out great. And then we took that back and it worked like a charm. However, still a ridiculous walk. Oh, it was still it was stupid. insane. It was but ridiculous. I mean, it's just. Again, it it would have been twice as long, even when we looked at the the distance. It would have been. Twice it was another as long. quarter of a mile, I think it was, if yeah. I remember right. It Which might a, not seem like a lot, but that's a lot. At nine thirty at night, after getting up at six a.m. Yeah. and you know doing all, doing a full day, okay. it's rough. Anyway. Yeah. So, um, uh, Emma's saying we have a little bit of a bonus. My in-laws live in Florida, and they are renting an Airbnb at Club Wyndham Bonnet Creek. And we are in their reservation, so we get to use all their amenities, too. That's awesome. Nice. That's I've really heard awesome. good things about that place. Yep, for sure. Um, and then uh, two hours to get on the ferry or monorail to our car. <sighs> yeah, maybe maybe yeah. our trick might help you out. Just take the boat to the Polynesian. Well, it depends on where you're it parked. It depends on where you're it parked. It depends on where you're parked, so our trick might not work yeah, out. Yeah, but... you know. Well, just keep it in the back of your head. If you end up on the... If you're looking down at the parking, the left side yeah, of the Polynesian side. Yeah, they're taking the monorail. Yeah, you don't have to worry about it. Yeah. You know? I'm, anyway. I'm jealous. I really want to... I don't... See, and the thing is, I don't... I, I want to stay at uh, the Contemporary or... I'm not, a, I'm not a big fan of Bay Lake Tower when it comes to the DVC side. Which is where we would end up staying. Yeah, I would almost rather stay at the Contemporary itself. Um, but what I really want to do is I just want to go up on that balcony and definitely just watch fireworks. Like, yeah. I don't need California Grill. I don't need any of that stuff. I just want to watch fireworks mm. from that view vantage point. I'll um, just say right now, I can't wait to hear about your trip. 
I can't wait to hear. I'm so excited. If you had a good time or not. I mean, I'm sure you're going to have a great time. But I can't wait to hear. I hope yeah. you have a good time. Yeah. Fingers, fingers um, across that, uh, you know, things stay status quo. Yeah. I guess would be the best way to say it. You know, it so, seems like merch is coming back. By the way, Mark, on a side note, merch-wise, definitely starting to see the cookie jar for Spaceship yeah, Earth coming back. Yeah, they've been back. popping back up. They're definitely back. They got a lot of merch back that was kind of back I think filled. there was stuff on barges that... Yeah, stuff's finally showing up. Finally I mean, showing Tiki up. Room lounge flies that are old. Yeah, yeah, and, like, stuff that, like, was released a year ago and then, like, disappeared and now it's showing back up. But that's great because there's definitely some stuff that we definitely wanted that we couldn't get our hands on yeah. before, so fingers crossed. So definitely keep your eyes. We got a lot of fingers crossed for a bunch of different reasons over here. Yeah. Um, so Mark said the resorts monorail usually has a much shorter line than the other monorail from Magic Kingdom, and both go to TTC. Yeah. Sure. Um, it does take a lot longer though. So yeah, if you're crunching time. Loop. Yeah. Um, we were going to wait until three year old was older, but she is all about the princesses, so. And the princess meet and greets just came back not too long ago. Yeah, you knock them, you can knock them out all in that one space. Yeah, well, That's not all of them, but a there's chunk. a bunch of them in that one space. So yeah, and the cavalcades have them all now too. So yeah. That's really exciting. Yeah, I am looking forward to meeting the princesses. I've never done that. No, neither have I. And I, I, I just realized that I've never met Sorcerer Mickey. Um, well, that's a problem. <laughs> and I want to fix it. You gotta fix that. Yeah. Um, but yeah. So when it comes to just getting kind of wrapping this up, I think it, it, when it comes to the the whole point of what we're doing here, the whole point of what we're talking about here is not to like turn you on to annual passes. That's a whole separate thing. Um, but just to kind of prove that crunching the numbers is really important, and you know, look at different options, even options that I think the reason I mentioned in new passes at all is because you got to look at different options and see if those options are, are feasible for you or would mm -hmm. make sense for you, even if it doesn't seem like they make sense. There have been plenty of times where we've done annual passes and only done one trip because it made more sense than buying the park hopper and or yeah. The memory maker or whatever. You yeah, know? it ended up working out for us math-wise at that time yeah. to do it. And, and every trip is different. Every time. trip is different. Every family is different. Every time of the year is different. So just make your, make sure you're taking the time to crunch some numbers and see what works out for you. And I hope that this inspired, if nothing else. I And that's, like I said, that's why we don't have the whiteboard. That's why we're not doing it kind of like that. It's because we'd have to go every week, every weekend, and look, there are too many yeah. possibilities. Um, so, let's see. Uh, would you recommend parking at other parks or taking buses? When it comes to, if you're staying at a Walt Disney World Resort, in my opinion, I say taking I say the, stick with transportation. Well, okay, so here's my here's my thought, because we're talking about a three year old here. Yep. Okay. So like Animal Kingdom. Okay. So initially, when I travel by myself, I never drive with a stroller. Okay. So um I never take a car. We have had a car down there a couple times yeah um and one time we were staying off property so we had to park at the parks and the other time we took disney transportation the entire time because i didn't want to fiddle with parking mm -hmm. okay my big downside in my opinion the thing that i don't like about parking is number one we don't know when the trams are coming back this is a really important one for all of the parks right. so magic kingdom tram is back okay um, others are coming back, but I don't know when, they don't know when. So you're going to, I would say it's safest to assume that you're going to be walking back to your car until we know for sure that the trips are back. Okay. Yeah. Um, it can get hot walking, as you know, um, it can get hot walking. Um, I personally just like to be dropped off right there at the entrance of the park and then walk straight through security walk straight through the gates without having to deal with parking the car remembering where i parked the car walking back to the car or walking to the gates and walking back to the car um so i would say 
make sure that you're, my recommendation rather, would be to just take the buses. Take the buses to Animal Kingdom. Take the bus to Hollywood Studios. In my opinion. Um, I'm trying to think, where else would you be taking the bus? Hollywood Studios would be, yeah, Hollywood Studios would be the other one. Yeah, Hollywood Studios would be the other one. Just for, just for funsies, because I like doing this kind of stuff, um, if you by chance were to drive, one, you're paying the extra $25 that's to an, park your that's car. That's another thing. So um, you're saving 25 bucks a day not parking your car. Not parking your car. But, um, for example, if you by chance don't get out the door right away, um, and for whatever reason it's a very busy day at Animal Kingdom and you still park the car, if you park all the way in the back of Giraffe, that's uh, a half a mile walk. Yeah, so you're adding a mile onto your day just to park the car. A mile plus $25. A mile plus $25. Okay, yeah. so there's that. Okay. I, don't exp- a, I, wouldn't expect that to, I wouldn't expect that to happen to you, but like these are just things to think about. Yeah, but you can't say that it wouldn't because people I know, have that's been parked far behind too. Okay, but here's the other thing. So we're talking about a three year old in a stroller. Yeah. Um,. No, I have I have to pay for hotel parking, so I don't have to pay again. You don't have to pay on top of that. Wait, so if you're staying at the Disney World Resort, you don't have to pay for theme park parking because you're staying at a Disney World Resort? I didn't know that. I don't know. That's I, pretty cool. Great, that's well, awesome. That's so awesome. then there you go. Well, so then it's not about the money; it's about the the extra mile that you're adding on to your day. But okay, what? <laughs> What were you going to say? No, I think the thing is, is I think it's not necessarily distant, uh, correct, and you pay for hotel parking daily. Yes, right. I yes, did know that. that. We do know. Um, but I guess the thing is time. Like like she's saying, it's like, you know, like waiting for buses and stuff like that. Well, I hold on, because here's the other thing I was going to say. Oh, sorry. Okay. Yeah. So we're talking about a three-year-old with a stroller. Um, I think that it could actually be really convenient Mm -hmm. to not have to i I don't know your three-year-old okay i've worked with kids and i know that three-year-olds they're all over the place some of them are like the perfectly tame some of them are wild little monsters and we love all of them (laughs) well said (laughs) but i feel like it can take a, a little bit of um You know, it depends on, I'm thinking of my sister. It can take a little bit of magic out of your day if you're walking that extra half mile in the heat to get where you're going. Yeah. You know, Um, but it it depends on you. Animal Kingdom is super hot anyway. Specifically Animal Kingdom. That's one thing I wasn't thinking of, but now that I'm I'm like, "Mm." so um, it's really nice to be able to walk basically from the hot park to the bus and then get on the air conditioned bus. Mm-hmm. That's nice, as opposed to have to walk from the hot park all the way through the hot parking lot and get into your hot car. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's something to keep in mind, you know, personal preference. I think the biggest hassle for getting on the buses, um, and I'm saying this in reference to, like, having a stroller and or having a wheelchair and or having a mobility device like you had to do in the past. Um, I think the biggest, the biggest annoying thing with that is having to just make sure that you're prepared by the time you get to the bus stop, you know? So if you have that stroller, one of the things that I, I think is a really great choice is using, I'm thinking of things that I've done in the past that I think would be helpful. I mentioned this before is um, if you have one of those big strollers, that's like loaded up with things, you know, like they're like the Cadillac of strollers that have the cup holders and stuff. I think just part of what makes it really easy is making sure that you can like, you pull all that stuff out before mm-hmm. you get to the yep. to the bus stop so that you don't have to fiddle so much with the stroller to get on the bus. Yeah. You're going to have to close your stroller to get on the bus, on the Disney bus, um, which I understand can be a pain just be familiar with your stroller that's another thing too that a lot of people don't think about is like really being familiar with how to use your stroller i'm sure you probably are already but especially it's worth that you saying, have your, your personal one with you not you know renting one or something yeah like that, which is huge um but if you get to that like 
that area and you don't wait until last second to to undo your stroller you know don't wait for the bus driver to say you're gonna have to fold Fold that that stroller (laughs) then it can be really really quick and i think that taking the bus is really effective and really nice as opposed to having to go all the way back to your car which you're gonna have to fold the stroller and everything anyway when Mm -hmm. you get back to your car but that's my personal opinion i like taking the bus i know you have to wait but i'm telling you I think the time Since, you're waiting the t- is the time you're walking to your car. Yeah. So I guess it's all up to you again. Would you rather be sitting and waiting yeah. for, 15, let's 20. say, 15, 20 minutes, or yeah. would you rather be walking 15, 20? Yeah. Um, okay, so there's a couple things. <laughs> you haven't taken the bus since 1992. <laughs> we'll take it. It's fun. <laughs> um, Especially if you have a fun bus driver. Yeah, fun they're, they're finally coming back. Fun. For me, I tend to get hot real quick. And the thing that really, like, the more I'm, like, talking about this and thinking about it, since I do get warm real quick, I feel like I preferred waiting in one spot, sitting down on the ground, getting off my feet for a minute, and, Check and your just app. getting on the yeah. bus that was nice and cool as opposed to having to walk to the car. Like, if I had the choice, mm-hmm. I would do the, the sitting in the bus mm-hmm. rather than the walking. Yeah. Um, okay, so we got a couple different comments here. Okay, um, I know, I kind of just like went off. It's I'm just thinking of all the different things because I, I don't want to be one of those people who's like, yeah, you could just do that and it's super easy and it's like, oh, but by the way, I have a three-year-old and a stroller. Like, that does add another element to oh, it. Sure. My suggestion, by the way, which I didn't say, is to have like a reusable bag. I'm going to talk about this at length in different at different time too, but if you have a reusable bag that you can load all your stroller shenanigans in, yeah. Um, and quick. like while you're when when you're getting to the bus stop, once you're at the bus stop, instead of being one of those people who runs into a situation where they like they forget that thing in the stroller, and then there's goldfish because the cap came off because they pulled the stroller and the goldfish went everywhere, and now the kids so upset because they really just look forward to the goldfish, and now they can't have the goldfish because they're all over the ground. You can avoid that. Um, I think having a reusable bag or something simple where you can put everything in real quick is useful yeah. and you can do the opposite you know what i mean every time you get on the bus throw those things in the bag then put the things where you want them to be i know i'm saying a lot of things it makes a lot of sense just give me some time to explain <laughs> <laughs> so um we, we're going back a little ways okay <laughs> um people have been talking i've been talking yeah amber amber actually has done her homework mark and i can't i can't disagree with that either um value resorts was 15 bucks a day to park mods 20 deluxe 25 yeah um i did not know that included park i did not know, I didn't know that, that, that included and i'm i'm surprised we missed that i don't know why I'm we missed that i'm surprised we missed that and i just really yeah I why don't know. does no one say that then cuz I, I i feel like this is one of those things and this this is something that happens a lot mm-hmm. where people miss little bits of information. That's a huge detail. And that's I feel a huge like. detail. And I feel like I have made my own mistakes and mm-hmm. I've, I'm happy to make corrections. Um, Crazy. We've never ha- actually experienced that though, like staying at the hotel. No, because we never park here to, to your point or to your question. Like, yeah. we never experienced that because every time we park the car at a resort, I pass. never drive it in. Because we never drive it in, or, or we're I had an pass, annual pass, so we don't even think about it. Yeah, yeah. but w- that wouldn't have mattered because when we, um, yeah. the annual pass, we weren't staying. When we drove with the annual pass, we weren't staying on property. Yeah, and then the only time you pay to park is to upgrade to premium parking. And you know what? Like Mark saying, that may be worth it to you. Is on that on yeah. those those days in particular, do the premium parking so you are parking closer and you're knocking out that distance and I you. Mean, you know, or take personal a bus. Or just take a bus. I think the question, too, is going like to be bus. how just... many times are you going to go to those? I mean, we got a three-year-old. Is she going to be, like, totally into Animal Kingdom? I mean, I would think so. But, oh, like, yeah. if you're going to do, are you going to do multiple days in Animal Kingdom? Or are you thinking, like, one day in Animal Kingdom? Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. Um, yeah, I knew that, that DVC members don't have to pay at the resort. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so like you said, she hasn't taken the bus since 92, which is awesome. Uh, next week, Disneyland's trams are returning, hopefully, while well, Disney World trams will soon as well. Yeah, between Magic yeah, we'll Kingdom see. and Hollywood Studios alone, they got to get them back. It's a little ridiculous. Um, uh, last year was also my first time since 92, um, so haven't uh, been... Um, 
uh, many chances either. Yeah, it's and a lot has changed. Mm. And she's got the bag. Oh well, there you You've go. You've got the bag. That's awesome. You know, Perfect. You, you got to be prepared. <laughs> for sure. Yeah. Um, that's and that's something that like every time I mention stuff like this, like every time I bring up stuff like this, it's because I am thinking to myself like, so I've traveled with kids before. I don't have kids. I don't well, you have the kids, experience of children. But I have the experience yeah. of traveling with children. And I have traveled you with... You just got to deal with me. So what you're saying is I always travel with a child. Fact. <laughs> um, and I have to push him around in a stroller, just like the last time he busted his ankle, and I needed to push him around in a wheelchair. Um, but I've, always, I've traveled around with young children various ages. I've spent a lot of time traveling with people who have different mobility issues, whether it's injury-based or whether it is, like, not being able to, to walk for long distances yeah, and stuff. And stuff like so that. I try to always bring up little tidbits that I think will be useful um, that people might not be thinking of. And, and when you travel alone, which I love doing, I find myself I find myself looking around and being like, oh, I, I see that that's a problem, like identifying problems. I mean, like, oh, I, I should bring that up because maybe someone wasn't thinking about this. Mm-hmm. I mean, of course, sometimes people just make mistakes or accidents happen or whatever. But um, I can tell you, I've seen a lot of people with the stroller situation. They have these, like, awesome strollers that have all these pockets and compartments. And then they get to the bus and they're like, hey, you have to fold that. Yeah. And they're like, okay. And then, like, six different compartments of things that they totally forgot about well, because you can't last fold second. It, you can't fold it because like, of that, right? That's yeah. the whole thing. Those well, and compartments sometimes, work, like, but... the cup holders on the top, like, the ones near the stroller, they'll, there. like, fold down and then I'll... Goldfish, like I said, it's goldfish. They're everywhere. So, so that's why I try and mention this stuff. I'm, it's not that I ever doubt any of you. Not that you guys are suggesting that at all. But I'm yeah. just trying to think of like, how can I help make the process better for right. someone and probably for me. Um, yeah. So, and <laughs> heck no, half day to three quarters a day at Animal Kingdom only. <laughs> yeah. So if that's the case, if you're talking about that for Animal Kingdom, like for me, I wouldn't drive. I would just be like, sorry, I have a big thing of it. I would send you some if I could. <laughs> um, it's a goldfish house. Yeah, it is a goldfish house. Um, fish-shaped snacks, goldfish and Swedish fish. It's one of those things. Um, so if you're going to be doing it, like, relaxed and chill, I would say, like, go ahead and take the bus. And especially if you're heading out of Animal Kingdom, Mm -hmm. I like when I'm heading out of places and I know that I'm going to be sitting, I prepare for sitting at the bus stop for a little while. Um, So I'll get myself like a nice cold drink or like a nice cool snack so I can sit there and enjoy that before I get on the bus. And then I don't have to worry about it. Because, I mean, if you're doing half day, three quarter day at Animal Kingdom, you're going to be Spending half your day just walking back to the car. That's my opinion. Let us know what you choose and what how you make out. Well, and this thing, so I'm, I'll just think about this, right? So, um, Mark was saying I was picturing live goldfish. No. <laughs> <laughs> I just eat them. Um, yeah, she said, I'm a teacher with a three-year-old. Um, I've got the BJ's goldfish at home and at school. Yeah, <laughs> right in a row. <laughs> Ours awesome. aren't quite BJ shaped, but it is that big carton. It's like the big yeah, milk the big, carton. Yeah, the big milk carton. Ready to roll. Um, so the one thing too that was like when we're talking about the bus schedules, if you're at like a half day, you're not leaving at prime time, so the buses are more infrequent. Yeah. So that's actually a very valid point to think about. And since so we you'll are get talking, there fast. And since we are talking about going with a three year old. Yep. If you're not trying to rope drop something spectacular like you know like i mean three-year-old isn't going to go on flight passage passage or something like that you can go at your leisure and the buses will be less crowded and you can kind of get there when you get there yeah the kicker is you just might be waiting almost a max duration wait time i guess for the bus maybe but, you know, I mean, I know when you're at the resorts and stuff, you can get those bus schedules, so you can try your best to line it up yeah. so you're not having to deal with that. Um, that's the best way to do it, because we did that uh, last time we were at Saratoga Springs, and it worked out pretty good, I think. Yeah. I think I, we, we ran into bus issues once or twice. Oh, no, no. Heck no. We are rope dropping. Well, then, there you go. Yes. You won't have a trouble getting bus when you rope drop. No. And when you leave, then you can just relax. Yeah. I think the only kicker is if... Um, if you want to like leave and then immediately get to another park um, and or like get back to the resort 
and then jump to another park. So I mean, you maybe you're saving time, but maybe you're breaking even at best. I don't think you're really saving much time though. In the end, I think it depends on how you're feeling. Yeah, feel thirty like minutes early for a resort guests. Yeah, so it's awesome. Yeah, it, it, yeah, it's gonna be an awesome time. Man, and that I'm so like, jelly. I want to go. Let's go right now. Let's go get a coffee at Joffrey's. <laughs> go get a coffee. Need another coffee. Yeah. I don't have enough Naps in the middle. Right now. <laughs> yeah. Um, yes, Mark, I'm excited they didn't have that last year. Yeah. So The 30 minutes. I know I that's that, huge. Now, look, I know it's not as good as it used to be. Let's go Monday's a holiday. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right? right? Um, it's not as good as it used to be. It used to be like an hour or more. Yeah, it was a lot um, different. But the 30 minutes is still a great thing to take advantage of. I think you're not, I believe you're knocking out a ride, a prime ride, and not needing Genie Plus to do it. Yeah. I feel like that's huge in this day and age of like, you need Genie Plus to do but anything. the big thing, at least in my opinion, is you're getting into the parks. Whatever it is. Even if you're not, even if you're not doing like the prime ride, which I think you should take advantage of if you're going to rope drop, but like you're getting in yeah. first. And that's a big, it's a big thing. Also, annual pass holders, if you were wondering, do have a separate entrance. Yeah, they do. Um... Uh, Amber said, can't get a park reservation right now. Yeah, it's too soon for you, I'm assuming. It's too early uh, right now. And I think that's another thing, too, Should right? We've been talking about for Monday. Oh, for Monday. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Um, no, and I think that's the other thing, too, is like, you know, you're going for seven days, and the max park reservations you can even make right now are up to five if you're an annual pass holder. If you're an annual holder. pass holder, but. As long as you're staying property, on property, so you, you get your time. time. Yeah. I, I, there's so much. You know, and here's the it's thing. It's so complicated. It's, it's not complicated, complicated, but it's just a lot. No, but let's call it what it is. It's complicated. It's like string there's theory a, and sanity on the wall. There's a lot of things to be aware of. I love of. it. And but I, hate I think it. that there's a lot of things to be aware of, and I think that it's it's so good that there are so many different channels of information out there. You know, whether it's yeah. YouTube or whether it's blogs or whether you're going to go with a, a Disney travel agent or whether you're just going to sit down and read all the books and everything yourself. Yeah. Um, you know, but it's complicated. It's, it's rough to, to try and work all this out. And, like, that's what like we're saying. We're crunching numbers, but we're... <laughs> Like, so do I stay much. on property, off property? Where do I stay? It, th this might be more expensive, but that might be more expensive. How much is a lift? But a lift could be this much, but that could be that much. Oh, how much tickets? Well, depending on what time of year you go. There's a lot to, to, to get into. Well, I think that's the thing is, you know, we're crunching the numbers at 174 a day, but that's for that one stretch. Outside of that, you're paying an additional 20 bucks a day. Yeah. Just off of that alone. Which is... I think that's There's where... There's your one Genie Plus And holder. you know what, though? I think that's where... I'm going to just, hold on, read that comment, and um, then I'm going to say what I'm going to say. It is complicated. Uh, you invest so much time into planning, and then plan goes out the window on the first day. <laughs> yeah. Chaos. Right? You know? And this is where, so, there's a lot of conversations happening about the price of Walt Disney World. And I can't help but feel like one of the things, aside from how complicated it is and all of this, I feel like one of the things that makes it seem much more expensive than it may be, because mm -hmm. um, we're going to talk about, like, according to what, like, compared to what in the, in the future, because I have this whole, like, thing that I just have to, this, a whole conversation that I want to have and I have to have about how expensive things are compared to what. Oh. Um, so but it's I gonna think be a great video. it's gonna be a I video. It's probably gonna be like a whole it's an series. eye opener. But um, it's nuts. but one of the things that I feel like is important when when or one of the things that I feel like makes people think that Disney is so much more expensive than it is is that they're like tickets start at hundred and nine dollars and then it's so complicated to find out the price mm -hmm. depending on the day that well it starts at hundred and nine but when I'm going it's hundred and seventy five and it's like that's where I think things. <laughs> get weird and i think well, that it seems yeah. more complicated if they would just do a different price structure where the price was like similar except for on these couple days then right. we wouldn't be having the conversation so often about how expensive it is but instead we're sitting here going well is it expensive well i only travel in september well it's the cheapest that it ever is in september well and i think you that's the I mean? thing is like you know it's like book like when we had the conversation of booking a hotel off property you know you go to hotels.com and it's like 25 bucks a night but then after all your fees and stuff like that and all the amenities and what have you, you're at like 80 bucks a night. 
So sticker price is Garbage. out the window yeah. nowadays. Right. You have to click your way through everything. Yeah. Um, yeah, Amber's saying, uh, yes, I agree, Mark. That's why I got all the things uh, because, well, I have a three-year-old and she rules the world. <laughs> Except my in-laws watch her and me and my hubby can play. Um, okay, so here's a comparison. Our 10-day trip minus food is about nine grand right now. Mm -hmm. Our one-week condo at the beach is now five grand a week, not including anything else. Yeah. It, it's, it's nuts. Yeah. I mean, it's... There's... It's... Yeah. So that's one of the things kind of going to compare to what... I've, I've been having a lot of... As I'm sure some of you may have noticed recently, I can get grumpy. <laughs> and that's how I describe it. And recently, it's February. It's the worst time of year to exist in Minnesota because it's like seeming like spring is here, but it's not. It's rough. <laughs> like, can I go outside, but I can't? <laughs> um, so, so, but one of the things that I'm noticing a lot is people like to say things. They like to say a lot of things like it's expensive or this, that, and the other, but they don't say anything about the comparison. And that's. Yeah. We're going to talk more about that because, I mean, just as a little bit of a spoiler, the people are talking constantly about the price of, like, T-shirts at Walt Disney World <laughs> um, being in, like, the $25 to $35 range. <laughs> Today, we decided to have a little bit of a day out, mm -hmm. went to the Science Museum. Mm -hmm. <laughs> T-shirts were $35. <laughs> yeah. You know? And it's like, it's... It's interesting because, like, okay, so... And that's what, like, a generic T-shirt... Like, they weren't, like, mm -hmm. you know, Science Museum T-shirt. It was, like, generic, science-y T-shirt, $35. We saw another shirt that was a Science Museum T-shirt, like, sweater, lightweight sweatshirt, for yeah. $50. So, yeah. it's it, it's one of those things where it's, like, okay, so compared to what? We're going to go around and look and do some other searching and see, but... um. Yeah. There's some other things we're going to be comparing. It's, 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 I want to make this video. Well. We need to make that video sooner rather than later because I feel like I'm about to explode. There's so much to say. <laughs> but um. Um, Real quick, though. So uh, Amber said, my in-laws live 20 minutes from the Gulf. Uh, I'll go uh, go to the beach uh, when they visit in April. I'll do Disney now for the cost differential. I could have stayed cheaper, but Monorail Resorts uh, are easier for us. Yeah, mm -hmm. I like staying in the loops. I also, um, another thing which is really hard to, like, calculate, although I'm sure we could figure out a way <laughs> in a future cr number crunching video, um, the amount of time you're going to end up spending, uh, get, it's much more convenient. You're paying, but you're paying for such a convenience. Yeah. And, um... And it's not just like a little bit convenient, but you can, you'll find, I think, when I do these types of things, I find that you're spending much more time when you're so close in the monorail loop or in the Epcot area resorts, you're getting more for your money. Oh, totally. I, like, I'm trying to think, think of how so. I'm going to say, how, how I want to say it. But like, for example, when you stay in the Epcot area, which is what I'm more familiar with. So hang in there with me for a second. You're walking distance from Hollywood Studios and Epcot. And so it's very easy to just be like, I'm just going to go for the, go to Epcot to go get dinner or go get yeah. a snack. You know, she just said time is money. And yes, exactly. Time is money. Yeah. And so, you know, this is one of the reasons that you won't find me going on vacation and staying at Animal Kingdom Lodge because Animal Kingdom Lodge, although it's beautiful. I, I want to stay at Animal well, Kingdom Lodge so I would, I would absolutely go and yeah. do a vacation like for being at Animal Kingdom, yeah, Kingdom kind of Lodge. Um, but if I'm going to theme parks, if I'm prioritizing the time that I spend at the theme parks, I'm not going to stay at Animal Kingdom Lodge. It's way out there. It only yeah. has one form of transportation that gets you where you want to go. And it's a deluxe resort. And part of the perks of a deluxe resort is having multiple forms of transportation to get right. where you want to go. So why on earth? Why pay Would the prices I for that? Pay for that. And then you're you're essentially you know? at Coronado Springs, like we're talking about buses. You know, yeah. Hashtag buses. And contemporary <laughs> is another one that not only do you have the monorail, but you're walking distance from Magic Kingdom as well. Yeah. That's so you huge. could decide to just take a stroll 
from Magic Kingdom back as opposed to getting on the monorail. Mm -hmm. Like, that's the idea. That's what you're paying for, you know? Time is money. That's yeah. exactly what I was trying to say. Thank you. You said, uh, we also don't do many sit-down restaurants on site since many of us are staying off property. Um, I'm not big on sit-down restaurants. I was going to say, we don't do, we're not a big sit-down restaurant at the theme parks either. Um, it's time. Time is money. Time is money. <laughs> that like that yeah. is exactly the phrase I was looking for. Time is money. Yeah, and it's it's dead on. Now I I think you know do you pick at least one sit down? Um, I for me it's about having like really good experience. Well, like that, I'm not. You're never gonna get me to go to a steakhouse, in the park. I, I just I don't. Like, well, I mean, and I think this thing is like you know like we're not, hard, we're not diehard steak people. For example, so like steak houses, there are a dime a dozen. Obviously, there's ones that make better steaks than others. Mm -hmm. But like, I like unique experiences. But that's what I'm saying. Yeah. You know what, you know what I mean? mean? Like, I'd rather go to, you know, uh, Skipper Canteen. That place was phenomenal. Yeah. So that's phenomenal what Phenomenal food and experience. Yeah. So that, like, that's where I'm getting at. Is like, yeah. I want to, if I'm going to take time out of my Disney day. Right. And take the money per hour, you know. Yeah, to go and go, to go there. Yep. I want to make sure that it's going to be an experience that I couldn't like. I don't want it to be like something that's similar to TGI Fridays. No, I want it to be like this is amazing for this, that, or the other reason. Yeah, uh, we do one sit down a day. It may be off property since our party is twelve. Yeah, um, that's that's a lot of people to. That's a big one. That's that's, that's not a, a joke. Good, that's a good time. That's awesome. We did a party of fourteen once. Yeah. <laughs> That must be insane. <laughs> like, I'm so jealous because, like, I, I want to do that. That sounds like a great it's a time. Thing. Um, it's a thing. But, yeah, I think, and, and like, at best, I don't, I don't even know if you could do this at a party as well. I'm sure you could because you got to, you, but you'd have to pay the reservation in advance. Like, sit down wise, like, I want to do a character meet and greet. Like, knock something out yeah. with the time. Meet some characters or have, you know, again, experience mm -hmm. or have extremely unique foods. Like, going and eating at Animal Kingdom Lodge at Sanaa and stuff like that for unique food choices mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Or like Skipper Canteen, which was amazing food plus experience, blah, blah, blah. I'm a huge fan of the character meet and greets because it does kill two birds with one it stone. Does. Especially when you have little ones. Um, because, you know, instead of having to wait in line to meet that character, you're eating breakfast, you're eating whatever, yeah. and you're meeting. I know the food isn't always the best at character dining, but no. I, it's totally fine. Yeah, um, so she was saying, Chef Mickey's, uh, we do for breakfast. Yes. That's awesome. Yeah. Team it's, it's Chef Mickey. Team Chef Mickey breakfast. Um, and Mark was saying, um, off topic, I posted my Hollywood Studio strategy on your Facebook. Uh, post the one advertising the reading your comments every season. Yes. We saw it. Thank that. you. We saw I haven't had a chance to sit down and yeah, read it Yeah, we got to break yet. it down. Yeah. Um, but we are going to. Yep, we definitely uh, got our hands on that, so we're ready to go. Um it goes so far. I, I can't I know. see it. I know. Our guest bouncing. was good. That's all I saw. Before yeah, so it let's see. Uh, Beer guest was good, but uh, the only beast, uh, but with only beast, it wasn't worth it. Oh, boy. So you're so just, you we, just opened up a can. <laughs> we did Be Our Guest in 2019, and it was a terrible experience. It was probably, and I'm sorry to say this, it was my worst ex experience, probably on Disney property. I think I'm I sorry. would say that. It was so it, it's it's sad to say it because my dad was really excited to yeah. take us because he wanted, but even he later was like, "This is not what it was." We did not get the advertised went. experience um, at all. No, we didn't see um, we didn't see the beast. No, we didn't see any characters. We didn't see any characters. It was very rushed. Our table wasn't ready. Our table, no. Our, so they called us. So. Okay, as a little bit of a side note, I did write about this on the website, but whatever, long story short. Sure. Um, my mother has mobility issues, and they wouldn't allow her to bring her wheelchair into the restaurant. And so we were like, that's fine, because she can walk short distances. It should be okay. What we didn't realize is that from the time that they had to, she had to park her wheelchair outside, basically with the strollers, um, it was still, like, quite the wait once the table was ready yeah. So they had us walk through the whole line, do all that that whole thing. Yeah, selecting um, our meals and everything like selecting that. Selecting the meals. We went yeah. for breakfast. I don't even know if the beast shows up for breakfast, but that's neither here nor there. But, but he didn't during our time. Mm -hmm. um, 
they had us walk all the way through the restaurant to get to a table they said was ready. There was no table. Then they had us walk, walk the opposite direction the to the opposite other direction, side. And they were like, this is going to be your table. And they had us stand there while the family was finishing their meal. Um, oh, so my mom and the rest of my family had kind of like, I was like, sit down because there's, this is not going to work. Like her walking back and forth. Yeah. Um, so anyway, so they had us stand there. And I honestly, I felt terrible because the family was like, they had kids. They were still getting themselves squared away. Like, yeah. it, was, it was one of those things where they're like, you just stand here and wait for that family. And I felt like the rudest person, even though, like, I had no other choice, right? Like, and there was we tried to not be... And I want to I say this real quick. There was nowhere for us to go. Um, this was at the time where they would max capacity restaurants before the pandemic obviously this is 2019 so we were you know tables are stacked on top of tables and i don't know if anyone you know mark's maybe gone recently i don't know uh but like you were right on top of each yeah, other like we, at we, the time we there was nowhere we, we for us to go we couldn't step forward or we would have been like holding onto their shoulders but we couldn't step back because, because there, was there were people behind, behind us, us. Yeah. So it was one of those situations where we... And the table was like in the middle of other tables. It wasn't yeah. near a walkway, walking path through the restaurant. Yeah. And so it was one of those situations where you felt terrible because I we were doing, like, as per what the staff had us doing, yeah. exactly what we hate that people do. Where you're, like, standing there and you're like, come on, finish your meal. Not yeah, that that's was... what our attitude was because that wasn't our attitude at all. But, and then when they finally got up, then they had to clean the table. They didn't clean the table well, so it was very sticky. Yeah, <laughs> it, was, it was just a nightmare. The was meal night. was subpar. Um, now, I've heard some people say really good things about Be Our Guest, so maybe, maybe during my next trip, I'll try and see if I can get a reservation and just do it myself so we don't burn the money of, of yeah. both of us going, just to see what my opinion is. But that was, it was terrible. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it was not. It was not a good day. Um, yeah, let's see what Mark has to say here. Uh, on our last trip to Walt Disney World, we ate outdoors at Flame Street Barbecue. While we were seated, uh, I kept hearing someone say "quick, quick." Um, I knew it was next to impossible to find an empty table, but I still thought it was rude because we just had gotten our food and just had sat down, sat down to eat. Um, Quick, 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 I heard again. I heard again. Um, from the bushes next to our chair, I finally turned to confront the offender. It turned out it was just a duck with the hiccups. <laughs> <laughs> um, I did have something similar to that happen when I was traveling during my um, spring trip mm -hmm. at Woody's Lunchbox and um, where, like, there was just not enough seating. I think part of it is that there was not enough seating, and I also one of those people who... I want to try and... I don't want to take up too much space. I know that I can take up space and be totally fine with, like, enjoying my, my meal. Like, I'm fine with that. But, like, there's no way that I'm going to look at a parent with their kids or, like, an elderly couple and be like, nah, I'm going to sit here and just, like, sip on my water. No, I'm like, all right, I'm done and I'm out. Sit down, eat, um, yeah. That's my style. Yeah. That's how we are. So, um... Yeah, I've had that happen where I, I have people kind of like look at me too, and they're like, e "Getting up." Yeah. On a side note, though, Flame Tree Barbecue is phenomenal. So good. I love Flame Tree Barbecue. I always get it when we go. I love sitting over there. Fun fact: there's actually a seating area that's actually on the water. You can actually watch kite tails from that seating area, which is awesome. Yeah. So, but yeah. Man, I think that about does it for today. <laughs> so much. Yeah. So, like I said, I, I know that this wasn't a traditional, a traditional, like a regular number crunching video, but I hope that this kind of gave you an idea of like how to work numbers and a bunch of other stuff too. Yeah, I think it's a, it's a, you know, and sometimes it's just an eye opener to the situation as a whole. To yeah. if you've never actually crunched numbers for you know getting your tickets. It starts getting your brain uh, working and trying to figure uh, stuff out, you know? Yeah. Um, let's see what Mark had to say here. Again, it pops up, then gone. Right? I just learned about the uh, about that hideaway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just, it's tucked away, and it just, it happens to have water access, essentially, yeah. to, to watch the show from, from seating area. So if you time it right, 
you're golden. Yeah. Dinner, you know, lunch and a show. Lunch and a show, yeah. Lunch and a show. For sure. Yeah, Flame Tree Barbecue sounds so good. I am so hungry. We haven't eaten dinner yet. And I'm like... Oh my God, yeah, we didn't. I'm like... It, I Jones was fine, and now I'm like, ooh, so barbecue. Eat goldfish. <laughs> <laughs> so, but anyway... Um, thank you all so much for joining today. And I just want to say thank you so much for your suggestions of kind of topics to discuss today because it was really, I feel like we had a really nice discussion. Yeah, it was awesome. You know, we got uh, some stuff worked out. Um, hopefully, you know, we got your brains uh, thinking. And you definitely, you know, a bunch of the stuff came up, like learning about parking as part of the hotel resort stuff. Yeah. That's what's so great about some of these conversations is, you know, we all learn something from it. Um, yeah, because I mean, not we don't know all... everything. No, heck no. I mean, look at the video. It's chaos. It really is. <laughs> Total chaos. Total chaos. You know what I mean? Um, so. Boy. Okay, so before we go, though, we're going to yeah. be talking about some other things in the coming week. Um, <laughs> we're definitely going to take some time. I, I think we're going to, Wednesday, we're going to shoot for doing the flower and garden discussion. For those of you who missed last Wednesday's video, we kind of changed last second because yep. we got some great comments. We wanted to get into, um, like, away from the flower and garden discussion and get into some other things. But we're going to bring it back. So on Wednesday, yep. we'll, we'll do the flower and garden discussion. Coming it Exciting. is coming up, and it's one that we've experienced. So, or it's one that I've experienced. I have no idea. Um, so, no, you did. You did flower and garden, too. Yes, you did. That was the gross burger uh the gross chicken sandwich was flower and garden what i think that was the no anyway we're gonna talk about flower and garden I'm gonna on wednesday you okay so we're gonna <laughs> talk about that and then um from there we've got a bunch of great videos coming this week and uh i don't think we have a saturday video coming but who knows maybe that'll change because we have a lot of stuff to talk about yep. i'm sure with uh the comments you guys have yeah, food and wine started on July fifteenth. Oh, yes, well, food and wine. Then it's I food have and wine. not done flower and garden. Uh, Mark says thank you both. Have a great evening, Amber. See you all Wednesday. Yeah. Thank See you. you thank um, you. Thanks uh, for st stopping in, spending some time with us. And like I said, Amber, thanks for your suggestions. Thanks for filling us in with some things we didn't know. Yeah. And, uh, and yeah. for anyone else who actually watches the video afterwards and comments, um, you know, please do. Uh, we definitely come back and read through as well. So we thank you in advance uh, for stopping by yeah. as well. So. But already, have a great evening, everyone. Bye, everybody. Bye.